What's up everyone? Welcome back to go-kart build number three and uh, in this video uh, Will and I uh, Will came down again from college on this Thursday evening and in this video We're gonna be uh, cutting some more metal and also a big surprise um, Not really a surprise, but just like a huge announcement for this project um, And it kind of really makes things easier for us But also a little bit harder at the same time because we have to um, basically it's trial by fire and you'll get what I mean in the later parts of the video when I announce what we're going to be doing. Um, but for right now, uh, Will and I are cutting some new metal that I got, and this new metal is for the shock tab mounts. And um, what it is, is it's one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch uh, square tubing, steel square tubing, and um, it's pretty much the same stuff, just a quarter inch bigger on each side. And um, we have to use these for the shock tab mounts because we have to make them ourselves because I literally could not find them anywhere on the internet. Like there's no places that sell the right size shock tab mounts. They're either for cars or they're for something else that, you know, is not really for applicable for what we're trying to use. So I got this idea from a guy called, um, well his channel is called T-Man's Go-Karts and he guided me to one of the videos where he actually built the shock tab mounts in the same way. So I'm using uh, his design and idea for these mounts. So thank you, T-Man. And um, I'm sure that I'll probably use some more of your ideas for go-kart um, designs in the future. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're cutting 12 two-inch pieces. And then of those two-inch pieces, we cut a 45 degree angle off of those pieces. And then we do a few more things. We use the drill press and that'll be in the later parts of this video or a different video to come because we're not sure when we're going to finish the shock tab mounts. Um, but for now we're just trying to get all the cutting done before it gets too late and people will start getting pissed at us because the saw is really loud. So we're just cutting all the straight cut pieces right now and then we'll be finishing up with the 45 degree angle pieces once we finish uh, the cutting the 12 of them. So I'm really excited to show this video to you guys. I hope you guys have been enjoying the last two videos. And this go-kart is really starting to come together. And it's really going to come together uh, after this video. So stay tuned, guys. And um, this video is going to be awesome. So enjoy it. So it didn't get through the bottom and it stopped. Did you get both of them or one? That was both. So right now we're taking a, an eating break. Mm -hmm. We only worked for like 20 minutes, but it's okay. <laughs> it, it was worth it. Yeah. We totally did go to work. If you guys haven't tried this stuff, this is the orange chicken from Trader Joe's. It's actually the same recipe from the guy who invented the orange chicken at Panda Express, but it's like five times better for some reason. So definitely recommend that. Mm -hmm. Great for poor college students. <laughs> poor college students? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just finished our straight cut pieces. And uh, next we have to just cut the 45 degree pieces off. And it looks a lot like the same footage we did in the last video, but the new stuff is to come later. So stay tuned for that. All right guys, so I know this video has been a little bit choppy and it's mainly due to the fact that the work we have done so far today is really just the same stuff we did in video number two. And I didn't want to bore you guys with just lots of lots of videos of us cutting and 
you know, sanding down the pieces. Because that's basically what we've done so far today. Um, we have been working on building or creating the suspension tabs. And basically what those tabs are are just two inch pieces of metal with a 45 degree cut on one side. And um, we started working on it. We had all the two inch pieces cut first. And then actually when we went to try and cut the 45s off each uh, end of each piece, we found that we couldn't do it because they were, the pieces were too short to fit into the mount for the miter saw. So we had to basically scrap uh, 24 inches of metal and this entire box is filled with scrap pieces now and um, so we had to buy new metal and then cut a 45 and then cut the straight piece at the two inch mark as we go so we've kind of learned another lesson in the fabrication process that if you have a really short piece of metal it's not going to work in the miter saw you have to kind of figure out how to cut it first with a long piece of metal while it's still attached to the long piece of metal and basically, so far, we've just been sanding down all the pieces and getting those all prepped. And uh, we're about to start the uh, something new that we kind of made a decision this week, actually. And um, that's why we hadn't had a chance to put a video together yet. And because um, we were still trying to figure out like how we were going to do this and how the welding is going to go about. But I'm stoked to show you guys this. Will's stoked to show you guys this. We have no idea what we're doing. So like I said, it's trial by fire. The blind leading the blind, whatever you want to say, but uh, here we go. And I'm going to introduce what we're going to be doing now. Luke, I am your father. No, just kidding. Anyways, so the thing I want to announce to everyone is, if you all know what this is, this is a welding mask. And behind me, Will is holding a welder. And what we decided to do was, due to the fact that we have so many pieces in this frame and there's so many different welds we're going to have to do is what we wanted to do is basically tack everything together ourselves and what I mean by that uh, is tack welding is just basically you know sp spot welding I mean that's not really the proper term and I'm pretty much a noob at welding I've never welded before I have no experience whatsoever so you can you know diss me all you want but we're just going to go into this and see what happens and um, basically, we're just going to tack everything together and get it set in place. And that's going to make it so much easier when we take it to the welding shop when they do the finished bead welding or whatever you want to call it. And the reason why we're not going to try and do the entire thing ourselves is because it is the frame. It has to be very structurally sound and, you know, very strong. And I don't want to be putting all these crappy welds on there and then have it break while we're going 50 miles an hour. So, um, and the fact that to spend all that time in the welding shop costs a lot of money because the welder's gonna charge us about 60 bucks an hour. So the less time we can spend in the welding shop, the better. And that, that will come by tacking it all together ourselves. And that will also help the fabrication process, such as like if we need to cut a new piece and then add it on, we can just easily, you know, tack it on real quick. So it's gonna make things a lot easier. And um, we're really excited to do this, kind of nervous. And um, so. We just kind of have to play it as we go, and we're going to go ahead and unbox the welder now and then get right to welding. But first, we're going to practice on the scrap metal we have, so we'll show you guys that as well. All right, so Will's got his handy-dandy pocket knife out, and we're going to go ahead and unbox this. And Will, why don't you go ahead and start opening the box, and I'll explain to you guys what we got here. So basically, what we got is a um, Chicago Electric 90-amp flux welder. And for all of those out there who are like welding experts, you're gonna say right off the bat, oh, that's a crappy welder. You know, yes, I know that. It's not the best out there. But we got this welder for $81. And, you know, welders can go upwards of three, $400. I don't have the budget for that because we've spent a ton of money on parts already. And this is just kind of an experiment and see if this works. So I thought, why not give it a go? And in the process, we learn how to weld as well. So Will's unboxing everything right now. It looks like just taking out some manuals and some of the um, small pieces that attach to the welder. And um, we're just gonna be you know, trying this and seeing how it goes. Uh, we got this from Harbor Freight Tools, as I mentioned, and we also picked up some welding gloves and a welding apron to go over our shirts so we don't burn ourselves. And then also, uh, as I showed you, the welding mat. And that welding mask is also from Harbor Freight, and it's like an auto dimming mask, and um, should be pretty good. So here's the welder right here. Is that the front? Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just a very basic welder. 
Oh, that's actually pretty heavy. It is, I'm telling you. So it's just a basic welder, and you know, it's got, you just use flux core wire, and um, like I said, I'm, I'm a noob, so I don't know a whole lot about this stuff. So if you guys have questions, or if you're an expert out there that's like, wow, this guy has no idea what, it's, what he's doing, and you're right, <laughs> if that's what you're <laughs> thinking. <laughs> because and you're probably right. <laughs> so it, it, it's gonna be fun. I've always wanted to learn how to weld, and um, I guess this is the way to do it sometimes. You know, you could take welding classes, um, but for now, since we're just doing simple tack welds, um, I think we're just gonna try this. And we're also gonna try and watch some U uh, basic YouTube videos so just to get a, get a general idea before we start. And then like I said, we're gonna practice. So right now we're just gonna get the welder put together, kinda get everything set up, and then we'll go ahead and film the uh, first time we practice with the welder. The following steps require applying power to the welder with the cover open. To prevent serious injury from fire or electric <laughs> shock, do not touch anything, especially not the ground clamp, with the gun or welding wire, or an arc will be ignited. That Two, sounds awesome. Do not touch <laughs> internal welder components while it is plugged in. We're gonna electrocute ourselves. We're gonna die. <laughs> We're just straight up gonna die. Oh, is that? Oh yeah, that's about zero. 16 gauge. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna want it at wire the speed of two. Recommended wire speed of two. Um, we have this type of wire. Okay. Yeah, so we want two minimum volt amp setting. Okay. Okay. Cool. That means we're we're using less amps. One of the problems that we were worrying about is if we would blow a breaker by drawing too many uh, amps. Um, but I think since we're going to be welding on the minimum and also just tack welding, which is like very short, like you know, spot welds, uh, I don't think it'll draw too much current. Um, but one thing that we got, I don't know if you can see that, that's it's Lincoln Electric um, flux wire, and that's because the the welding wire that comes with this welder is absolute crap. I've heard it gives you really bad welds, and um, it's just very messy and splattery as people describe. So I went ahead and bought this better quality wire and we're gonna be using that. So basically we're just reading the manual right now, trying to figure out how to get this thing going. All right guys, so we finally got the welder all put together. We literally read through an entire booklet of instructions to make sure we were doing everything right. Ran into a few problems uh, setting it up, um, but we got through it. It kind of felt like we were reading the instructions for a nuclear launch code, but it was probably because we are noobs at welding and we were like kind of like nervous slash like don't know what to expect. So it was kind of funny at the same time. But uh, right now we're just practicing welding and frankly, it's pretty fun and I really like it. Obviously we're no pro like at any level, but you know, we're, get, we're getting there and we're just gonna keep practicing before we actually start welding the frame because you know, when you weld, you have to consider like, you know, how long you weld for, you know, and um, you just have to make sure like when you tack that you're, you don't warp the metal. So you want a clean like 90 degree um, uh, joint. And so if you tack on one side, it's going to want to pull the metal up wherever, on whatever side you weld on. So we just have to practice at that to try and eliminate that because then our frame won't be square and it'll be kind of torqued in weird ways. So we're going to keep practicing um, and it's really fun. Like I really enjoy welding or at least what we've done so far and I'm really excited to just get even better at it as time goes on. So uh, let's get welding. Cameraman, you fail. All right, so we've got the welder on, got our little setup piece here and we're going to go ahead and uh, give it a shot. So we're going to just try and tack each corner and uh, prevent it from warping. So here we go. That was alright. Kind of missed it a little bit. That was a good one. Alright, so now I'm going to flip it over and then we'll uh, attack the other side. Yeah, not bad. That looks good. 
I'd put the magnets all the way down too. There you go. I definitely see how a welding table would help. Yes. Might be a wise investment. Where'd we put it though? Where would we put it? Yeah. It's like a foldable table. Oh, okay. You gonna record or? It's still recording. Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> Any comments, Andrew? Any comments? I don't know, it, it's pretty fun. Welding was kind of a phenomenon for a while, um, but actually experiencing it and doing it is, it's really cool. And you feel like a lot more sophisticated, even though I'm a beginner and I have no experience whatsoever. <laughs> if you feel like you have so much more fabrication skills now that you, like, you know, have the ability to weld two pieces of metal together. And the science behind it is pretty cool. The fact that you're like arcing a circuit to melt metal. So. That looks pretty damn good to me. T for. T bone steak. Yes. Mazel tov. All right, Will. This is your, what, second time welding? Second. Yeah. So wait, he's trying to make like a little piece, connect the piece. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so why don't you give it a go? Hey, going hot. Alright, can you flip it? Okay, don't be afraid to lay it on there for a little longer, you know? Yeah, go on. Yeah, that's good. There we go. Like a good one? Mm hmm. Alright. This one's okay, right here. Um, it's got a little slag on, a lot of slag on it. Uh, the second one right here burned through the metal. This one's fine, right here. This one I also burned through the metal. Yeah, this one you also burned through the metal here. So, got a little work to do, but at least they're both pretty square. Yeah, that's and that's what stand. we're looking for right now yeah. is keep it square so we can get a good cut or good frame, you know, layout. <clears throat> Agreed. How do we look? That looks a little better. guys so before I wrap up this video I kind of just wanted to summarize with everything that we did and uh, kind of the future plans of what you can expect 
Um, basically in this video we just wanted to finish cutting all those uh, shock tab mount pieces and then we wanted to unbox the welder and kind of familiarize ourselves with the welder, you know, its functionality, how it works, and you know, what it kind of requires. And uh, we've came a long way today, knowing absolutely nothing and having no experience with welding whatsoever, to, you know, getting some decent practice in uh, with some, you know, decent uh, pieces that were welded together. They were, you know, obviously not professionally, of, of professional quality by any means, but you know, for a beginner, I felt like it was pretty good, and they're decent, solid welds for just being tack welds. And you know, we tried some bead welding, but that obviously wasn't nearly as successful as our tack welding because that's a lot more difficult to do. Um, this welder likes to splatter a lot because of the flux core wire, and um, that's what happens when you try and bead weld and you don't have a lot of experience. Um, but basically, that was one of the big things that we wanted to do in this video. And then um, one thing that we did off camera that I didn't really have a chance to record due to the lack of success we had was we were originally actually going to um, finish all the shock tab mounts but, um, in terms of drilling holes through them with the drill press. But this particular drill press that I'm borrowing, it doesn't have the uh, clamps on it to hold the piece that you're drilling through onto the onto the plate. So we were trying to, you know, use all these different like, you know, hand clamps and C clamps to hold this these uh, shock tab mounts as we drill through them, but the the bit on the uh, drill press would just grab the shock tab mount and rip it up and then, you know, throw in like a tornado death trap. So that didn't work so well and we kind of got frustrated uh, after a while trying to figure out what else to do. So that's kind of be yet to be determined on how we're going to figure out how to drill through those. Um, but in the next video, we will probably start welding the frame. We just really wanted to get a lot of good practice in today because, you know, with welding, if you don't practice enough, it's very easy to screw up. And with these precise pieces that we cut for the go kart, I'd rather, you know, decrease the chances of messing up by practicing because, you know, if you don't weld enough or if you don't weld long enough, you know, you won't have a strong enough weld to hold the frame together for now. And if you weld too long, you'll actually burn right through the metal because the metal that we use is very, very, you know, thin. It's only like 0 0.065 inches. So that's very, very thin metal. And, it, you know, if you hold it, the, the welder on to a certain point for, you know, just a little bit too long, it'll burn right through it. So it takes a lot of practice. And, you know, we're by no means experts yet. And we still have a lot more practice. But um, that'll, that's what you can expect in the next video. I'll probably be doing that this weekend. Um, Will has some other things to do, so that'll probably just be me. But in the video after that, um, you probably expect Will to come down and help out again at whatever point we are in the uh, in the build. I'm hoping to get the uh, the frame tacked together for the most part uh, soon, and then I can send it off to the welding shop so he can do all the uh, the finished professional welds that are very strong and will give the the frame you know good structural strength. Um, so when we hit all those high speeds, it's not going to fly apart on us. And um, this tack welding process will just make the fabrication, not only for me, but for the welder, easier because, you know, uh, it's less time in the welding shop and that's less money. And it, it just, we don't have to lay it out at the welding shop. It's already laid out. He can just go right from there. And um, from then, you know, we'll be very close to having a rolling chassis. We just probably have to add a few more pieces for the axle and everything and it's it's going so I'm really stoked to get this rolling chassis put together and then you know eventually get the go-kart running and driving so uh, make sure you guys stay tuned and as always thank you guys so much for watching I re really appreciate the views and comments and I hope you guys find these videos helpful or somewhat entertaining and uh, if there's anything you guys have to ask just leave them in the comment section below and uh, I will see you guys in the next video have a good one